space tourism is now an option for travellers with big wallets and plenty of patience. Virgin Galactic is already planning its next launch after flying tourists into space for the first time this week. Image Matrix tech editor Juro Sen has been following developments. Juro, is this really going to be a regular thing, my friend? <laughs> Good morning. When I saw this, this was spectacular during the week and it's one of the space journeys that's got me excited over recent things. And yes, it is planned to be a regular thing. And uh, what we saw this week was quite amazing. They have a mothership with Virgin Galactic and this is the first private tourism trip and mother and daughter and a, an old ex-Olympian as well who uh, were able to fly up and you go to 45,000 feet and then you drop from the mothership and then the rocket takes you straight up and it takes you to about 85 kilometres. So essentially that's space. They say that is in America and you become an astronaut. Now, obviously, this is a suborbital, so you don't orbit, but you're up there for a couple of minutes and you're weightless. So uh, the prices for this vary from $250,000 to $450,000 US. So to answer your question, it is getting uh, closer to what normal people can uh, look forward to if you keep doing it month after month after month. Now, this is the challenge. If you go back to when the space shuttle was first launched, they wanted to get that thing up there basically every week, and that proved to be impossible. You know, flying these things is a little bit dangerous when you have a rocket, but people know the risks, but uh, I think they've learned their lessons over several years here, and Sir Richard Branson is so excited about it. So this is the first flight uh, with a uh, tourism uh, aspect to it and the uh, second flight commercially overall. Mm. So if you want to go to the US, Tim, and uh, I think there's an 800 wait list at this point, and you've got a cool half mil, you'll be up in space before you know it. Well, thankfully, my children are old enough to go on roller coasters by themselves these days because I won't do that. You know, I did it when I was young and I enjoyed the thrill. But as time's Fair gone enough. by, I'm not as keen. Would you do this? Yes, I would. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I knew, I knew I the answer it's, before uh, I asked. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a pilot and uh, I love that sort of stuff and uh, I'd absolutely do it. No, no worries. Uh, but if you can... Uh, Lend me a bit of cash, I'll be, uh, it'll be happen a bit sooner, mate. Oh, I'd have to talk to the boss at home before we lend it. <laughs> lend you that much. I'm happy to help with most things. Now, a new, a new report has warned Mac users not to be complacent regarding security threats. Uh, what's the story here? So this is uh, the latest from Bitdefender, and I've just been flicking through it. And it's a reminder that, look, we know Windows devices dominate the world, like absolutely dominate, but but Macs are getting bigger and bigger. So um, they are becoming more of a focus. And what this report says, there are several ways that, uh, you know, the bad guys are trying to get onto our computers. And, you know, that includes things like malware and you see Trojans getting onto your computer. And essentially <clears throat> what they're looking for is for you to, to actually engage it, you know, through these types of uh, infections that you uh, allow the software to come onto it. You might be downloading something that's an audio editor or something like that, and you think it's OK. Turns out that it's uh, a Trojan or there's going to be uh, adware that's going to infect your computer. So this is a warning. Yes, Macs are great, and they do a really good job in making sure they keep you generally absolutely safe compared to Windows. But, but at the moment, we, we can't, and I've got lots of Macs as well, you just can't uh, be complacent, Tim, because as Macs become more popular against Windows, that's when the bad guys are going to ramp it up. So good habits to be in right now is the fact that you don't click on dodgy websites or programs you're unsure of because that could lead to your Mac getting infected. Yeah, absolutely. Now, breaking news this morning. I went and got a new battery from Apple for my iPhone 8. So the oh, iPhone 8 well, is, is going to stick... News. iPhone 8 going <laughs> to stick around for a little while. You sort of... You get a creature of habit, don't you? Like, you know, I'm too scared to go into the new technology. I will eventually go kicking and screaming into one of the other Apple, the Apple phones. But uh, the point I'm trying to get to is momentum continues <laughs> to build for repairable smartphones. Uh, you have more on this. Yes. Yeah, that's true, Tim. Mate, I could have fixed it for you, but uh, that's great stuff. Uh, look, the Australian Repair Summit was on like, this week, and uh, this here is the good timing because this is the new Nokia G42 5G. So this is 
um, one of the more expensive versions of the repairable phones you can get. And as you can see here, I did this uh, repair early in the year on a cheaper version, but it absolutely works and it saves you money. And the more expensive the phones get, like this So Purple, they call it So Purple version, uh, then the more value your self-repair will have. So, Tim, rather than waiting those many years to change or get your battery done, you could have got one of the kids to um, get some pocket money and use one of these kits. Obviously, the Apple stuff's still rolling out. But the good news is Nokia's got another phone here now that's available in Australia, the G42, for you to do it on your own. And there's a real push, as I said, from uh, the industry, the Australian Repair Summit in particular, that, uh, that they are trying to push for more repairability, and I say it's a great thing. I used to love tinkering with electronics in the cars and stuff, and there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to do it with phones because you can't really hurt yourself with electricity. No, my kids wouldn't have done it because they want me to get a new phone. They think I'm, <laughs> they think I'm ridiculous. 